All right, so we're getting a little bit more advanced here. In this video, we are gonna go over to ProPresenter 7. We're gonna put a song into ProPresenter 7, set it up completely for automation through Ableton, and then we're gonna put it into Ableton and check and make sure everything's working right. All right, welcome back. We are gonna do a um, video that kind of starts out more on the ProPresenter side this time. Try to make this nice, quick, and snappy if I can. Um, last time we were working with Ableton and we put together this whole song uh, from a multitracks.com file so that we were prepared for a fully automated um, set, which is what, what our next goal is. But for now, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. I, I threw a couple of slide cues in here just to show you how that works the last time, but I've, I've deleted those now. And I want to show you from start to finish how to actually add slides from ProPresenter start to finish so that you'll be ready to put together an Ableton set for a song that's fully ready to go with automated slides. I think that's important. So that's what we're going to jump in right now. So buckle up. Here we go. So on the ProPresenter side, this is ProPresenter 7, and I'm just going to go into preferences first. I put a screenshot in of my MIDI map uh, on the last video, it, but here it is for you to look at again, and you could either pause, take a, a screenshot of this, or whatever helps you. Um, but this is the way that I set up my MIDI mapping. It's not that different from the way that they do it by default. But I want to make sure that my playlist item is an F minus one and my trigger uh, trigger slide call is um, F sharp minus one. So you just have to play with these until they're right because F sharp minus one is the note that I use on the MIDI side. When we make those little cues, they, they play an F sharp minus one at any and an intensity from 1 to 127 and that's what determines whether it's slide 1 or 2 or 3 or all the way up to 127 that's the one that fires so we're going to look at how that works um, in 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 the real world now we've got everything all connected with MIDI this is again something that I could I could teach this we could go into how to set up MIDI with the IAC driver uh, but that's either a separate video or really there's a million places you can find that on the internet how to set up the IAC driver uh, loop community probably does a better job than anybody about showing you what you need and not how not clicking a bunch of buttons you don't need so that's who I would probably recommend maybe I'll I'll link that if I get a chance to in the description but for now come up here new playlist and it's gonna be um, we're just gonna call this how to all right so in our how to playlist which we're now in and it has no items in it we're gonna drag our first item into it and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna come up here and we're gonna import from song select now everybody doesn't have song select if you don't you may have to do text from clipboard you might have to get a little creative with putting your slides together but I'm gonna show you how to do it with song select it's a quick easy process and I'm just going to go ahead and type in Canvas and Clay because that's the song we're working with. And there it is. That's the version that we use. We're going to import it. And I'm going to use um, slides delimited by line break, one delimiter per slide. I don't want any more than two lines per slide. And it's telling me now it's going to put it into my presentations library and it's going to put it into the playlist how to because that's the one I'm currently working in. And 1080 is fine for that. So we're going to import that. And there you go. And these are just one line. Um, so going with one delimiter, I've found that sometimes uh, going with one line or with one delimiter gives you one line of text, sometimes it gives you two. Uh, but you can see that these are split up by song section, and this is what they give you. So you got the first song section, it's verse one. You know, here's that first verse of Canvas and Clay, and then it goes right into the chorus, and then it goes into verse two. After that, it goes to the bridge. So it's, it's not giving you the songs in the order that it was recorded. It's just giving you everything, and uh, that's kind of the the um, important thing. But it also gives you some slides you don't ever want to show that say things like vamp. So this is why we want to go in and actually edit these things and, and work on our arrangement, which is the primary purpose of this video. So we're going to get this all set up and ready so that it can go over into Ableton and then everything can be seamless and perfect and, and uh, you don't have to think about it anymore. So here's what I do. The first thing I want to do uh, is I want to go in, I'm going to right click here and I'm gonna edit the slide. Quick edit lets you quick edit, like right there, just what it's called. If I wanna change some words or something, that's a, an easy way to just make small edits. But what I wanna do is I wanna edit all of the slides. So now it's gonna give me the whole slide pack on the side here. And the first thing that I typically do is I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this first slide. And now bear with me, okay? Because when it, wherever you name, uh, wherever you group these slides, it, it goes down until the next grouping. So right now, verse 1, this first slide that I just duplicated in is, is uh, grouped as verse 1, so everything under it is going to be verse 1 until you regroup in the chorus. So what I want to do is I want to actually 
start verse one here instead of here. That's fine. We can go to the show. And I am going to group this. Um, and I use blank. You can create some of these of your own if they don't come up automatically. So now, see, that changed all of verse one to blank. That's okay. Um, because now I'm going to come to the second slide and I'm going to regroup this as verse one. Now we're set. Now we have a whole group that's called blank. And when I go back into edit, I'm going to remove all the text from that. So now I have a, a legit blank slide that I can use anywhere I want to. Looking through the rest, the verses is, is good. The chorus is right. Verse two is right. Uh, the bridge. Let's um let's look at this where we can see it a little bit better. So we know when I doubt it, Lord, remind me I'm wonderfully made. You're an artist and a potter and the canvas and the clay. I know nothing has been wasted, no failure or mistake. You're an artist and a potter of the canvas and the clay. Yeah, so that's correct. And then they've got like these miscellaneous slides, right? So this one is called vamp. That doesn't matter because we're going to use the blank slides instead uh, instead of that. And then you've got the you're not finished with me, you're not finished with me yet. And this isn't in every single uh, version of the song. Um, and so we need to listen along and see what's what. Sometimes I create separate categories, like with a tag, um, because y you'll see, they, they crank it out to you all sorts of crazy ways, but you, you want to make it some kind of a standard way so that you can control um, everything. And, and what I just showed you in making a blank is basically how you make any kind of uh, special category. So I'm going to show you basically why I did that. We're ready, and I'm going to hit this button right here. Now this one is the arrangement. Um, the master arrangement now just contains blank, verse 1, course 1, verse 2, bridge, miscellaneous 2, right? So that's not correct. That's not going to help us get through the song in order. So we're going to make a new arrangement, and you can call this what you want. Sometimes you just call it like Sunday or, um, you know, whatever specifically, weekend, however you want to use it. Um, so now what we have is in these light blues, we're creating a special arrangement of this song just for the way that we're going to need to use it. And we can go back and forth between here and, um, and Ableton to see, you know, kind of how those cues come up now that we've made our cues the way we want to. So I'm, I know I'm going to start the song off with a blank because I like to do that. I like to blank out what's on the screens for people while a new song is starting. Some people like to put up a whole big thing with the title of the song and everything like that. Um, I don't usually do that. I just go blank and then we, we move on from there. So we know that after that blank, we're going to have that first verse, right? And it's going to go um, all the way that uh, all the way to the end of this verse. You're an artist and a potter on the canvas and the clay. Two, three, and then you make all things come together, right? So we know we're going to go from that verse right to that chorus. Let's go ahead and swing over and take a look. Um, all those intros and all this stuff is going to be where that blank slide is. Once we get here, we're in the verse. Um, and, and this, they're calling the pre-chorus. I know nothing has been wasted, no fail failure or mistake. You're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay. Um, it's just called verse over, over here. You can change that if you want to, but it's not that big a deal. It's sort of a pre-chorus. It's sort of a verse. Um, either way, it's not going to hurt because it doesn't ever get split up. It comes the way it's supposed to. And then we hit that chorus, and then we hit the turnaround. Now, a turnaround is uh, it's a short instrumental section where the chord progression changes to reflect what's coming next and we're going to go back to a verse. So anytime you have a turnaround, you're going to want a blank slide in here. So we know we want a blank after the chorus. We want to do a blank slide so that the uh, slide's clear before we jump back into another verse, uh, which includes that pre-chorus, and then into a, another chorus, okay? So what we want to do here is we want to drag a blank after chorus one. And now you've got blank, verse one, chorus one, blank, verse two, um, and then we're going to go back to that chorus one. And that's that leads us to where we are. So at the end of that chorus, you've got an interlude, right? And we can always test that just by having a listen. Interlude. Yeah. So this is just a, it comes down. Pre-chorus one, drums in. And I doubt it. Pre-chorus two. I know nothing. Yeah, these are labeled pre-chorus. That's the bridge. Um, sometimes you get these things. Chorus. All in. All right. So we 
know where we are there. We've got these two little interludes where there's nothing really happening. So what we need there is a blank slide um, to keep the, the screen blank and non-distracting, right? So now we know we have this this bridge, which, which they're calling pre-chorus one and pre-chorus two. But when we looked at that thing before, we saw that the bridge contains the whole thing, the first half and the second half. Um, I know here's that pre-chorus two. So now we're set and we're okay. But we know that at the end of that, it's going to go right back into the chorus again. So we're going to bring the chorus back in after the bridge. Let's go back here and check. Um, and and then they're going to go, okay, so here's, let's listen as the chorus ends. It looks like they're going to go back into the bridge again. Pre-chorus one, drums. Yep, so this is a, this is a down bridge. Because you just have nothing but the drums there. Pre-chorus two, all in. Right, and then we pick it back up for that second. So essentially we just have the full bridge playing. over here we just need to add another bridge to account for those for that as they call it pre-chorus one and pre-chorus two and then we're down to you're an artist and a potter I'm the canvas and the clay so the you're not finished with me yet stuff isn't happening in this version that doesn't mean we can't manipulate it and change it and make it be that way um, but for now we're just gonna follow the song so let's come down here and may as well use these things right I'm gonna delete this one because we don't need but two um, and it just needs to say, you're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay, right? So now these, that's going to be the tag at the end. And that tag happens twice. Uh, but as we come back into the show, we're going to take this thing, and we're going to rename that group to tag. That way it makes more sense for what we're doing. Um, and so we got a tag, and then if, if you remember back here, there were two tags. You got it, um, let's just verify, right? Tag. Ending. Okay, so let's go back over here, and we will re-tag, because that's happening twice. Uh, and then you'll have all your slides in order, and then we'll end it with a nice blank, because right on that last beat of the song where the ending comes in, you're the canvas, and the boom, blank. Everything goes dark. The lights are probably getting dark uh, at that point. And that puts you in perfect position to have every slide from start to finish exactly where you need it. We have 52 slides, and we're fine because we can have up to 127, so no problem there. Now that this is done... Um, we're going to have to drop these things on the timeline. So um, let's go ahead and get into that now. Now that we're done with this, we can collapse that. And we know, by the way, these are this is the item list, but when we go to that nice how-to, let's say this is the Sunday we're working on, we know that this is item one, right? Remember I was talking in the previous video about how you might have hosting here and then you might have announcements or whatever else. So you just have to count down to which item in this list canvas and clay is. And we know here it's actually item one. To check that out and test it, we're going to start with the playlist because that's item one. We'll go back to the beginning of the song. And the first uh, cue we're going to drag into the slide track is just item one, which as you can see changes this. And I'm just going to change it back to slides because that's what I like to call it. It makes it much cleaner. Um, and then I'm going to move into the actual slides, right? And slide one, if you look back over at ProPresenter, slide one is blank. So we're going to use, you can see the number of the slides here. So slide one is blank, which means that's the one that I want to drop pretty quick, you know. Um, and I like to put it right at the intro. So if you can imagine, we've already blanked out the uh, at the end of hosting, and, and we'll see how all that works in the full set video. But watch how this goes. One, two. Intro, two, three, four. See? When it hit that thing on the slide queue, it Intro. Went ahead and pulled up slide one. Now I can go back 
and get ready to drag those slides first down for the verse because we're gonna and we talked about how in my mother's womb right uh, we wanted that to come on beat three prior to the to the verse so let's see how all that shakes out um. verse one three in my mother's womb all right we need to switch again so we got one in my mother's womb so I'm, I think I'm going to hit it on that beat. You form me with your hands. Right? So let's watch how that looks when we do it over in the other side. Verse 1. Okay, it would have been on the blank. In my mother's womb. Boom. You form me with your hands. Um, so now I'm going to break down and just show you how all of that looks so you can see how that manifests itself over on the pro presenter side all right so now that i've gotten this all set up i have all the slides placed in at the right places there are a couple places where i um shrunk them down from the back just to make room for the next slide to come in just remember the notes the midi notes if i expand this out you can see that the note just comes at the beginning of the cue so never shrink this from this side but if you need to make it smaller from the back you can always do that to get the next cue in so let's go ahead and uh, have a look at this, and it'll give you a chance to see just how it looks when uh, when Pro Presenter is run by Ableton. So the first thing it's going to do is hit that item number one, and uh, one. There we go. Two. So I want you to see how that happens. Intro. Here. It's been two, selected. Three, four. And then slide one hits, and it's a blank. So I'm gonna. Intro. Spend more time over here. The next thing we're going to do is come into this in my mother's womb, and it's going to come right up on time. Verse so one. I'm put these things so you can see both at the same time. There it goes. So those are coming right at the right. Pre chorus time. one. And if you wanted those, you could take all those slides and drag them back by one if you wanted to, just to have them come up a little bit more quickly. I think this is pretty good timing, though. Chorus. And then we come in with the chorus. There we go. Now, the cool thing about using this setup instead of just a now you could just get like a, a dummy cue that just says go to the next slide go to the next slide go to the next slide if you do that it's a little bit easier in setup but man when you Turn try to get back to the slide that you're supposed to be on it's a nightmare because you have to go into pro presenter and reselect the slide first that you're two to be on so that the next slide gets chosen all properly. in let me show you what i'm talking about there see these are all done by the correct slide that you're supposed to be on which means if we need to stop and correct something back here, pre chorus two, this. and boom, you make all things work together. See, once it hits that cue, it goes to the proper place. I'll show you that again in, uh, in motion. Let's uh, turn around, let's go back here. intro there now watch the way this thing is just going to skip as soon as it first one boom goes where it's supposed to be and this is what it looks like from the pro presenter slide when this is running i know this is a little bit of a long video to uh to show you pre-chorus one hopefully it gives you the, the visualization of what all of this is supposed to look like when it's all working properly and that's how that goes now when we get to um, like the end portion Chorus. of the song. Let's see how that all wraps up. Chorus one, drums. This is that uh, drums only bridge, which they're calling a pre-chorus. Yeah, you, know, you can adjust that stuff and change it. That's another thing. Pre-chorus two, all in. Blackout if we want one. 
And that is how you do that. All right, can you just feel yourself getting better now? Uh, so now we have learned how to take a multi-tracks file, go over and set it up in Ableton, prepare it for full automation, then go over to ProPresenter, create a ProPresenter file that's ready for automation, and then actually go over and automate that. So uh, you're putting tools in the toolbox and getting better. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe and tap the bell, and don't miss what's next. We're just going to dig deeper and deeper.